Get ready for the countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. All right, it's time for the Voodoo Chef Podcast, where we will discuss all things voodoo from the Voodoo Studios located right here in beautiful Tampa, Florida. So to all my booties out there, if you're looking for nothing but a good time, this is the place to be. Call your friends, knock on the neighbor's door, and let them know it's time to party like a rock star for the next hour. Join me and my guests and learn to voodoo like we do as we discuss our faves and the voodoo that we use. I'll put our guests on the spot as we ask for their top three and make sure and listen as we discuss some of our favorite war stories from the kitchens we've worked in. Sit back, grab a tall glass of your favorite libation, and enjoy this episode of the Voodoo Chef Podcast. What's going on, Big Eddie C? I did it. Look at that chrome dome happening. Woo! I went, I got a brand new haircut, and I, I went back to 1993 when I shaved it for the first time. And uh, kind of digging it, man. Yeah, it was so much less work when you ain't got none of this shit to fuck with in the morning, you know? I, Dude, I used to have a mullet. took 15 minutes in the morning to do all it out. Yeah. And once I shaved all that shit, it went to 15 seconds. That's 14 minutes and 45 seconds of extra sleep, motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, not like I combed my hair anyways. I mean, it just kind of hung over my bandana. But but now I, comb <laughs> it with, now I comb it with a razor every morning. There you go. Absolutely too easy, man. Hey, uh, yeah, dig it. You know, Big Eddie C, uh, I was hanging out at uh, a brewery. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is like right up your alley, man. So I was hanging out at Dark Door, and they've got this thing called Spirit of the Oak, and it's their bourbon. But I noticed, you, you know, they've got this little cookie on here. Um, they they went to a, a local brewery, and they took a barrel that, uh, you know, some of your brewmaster buddies made a oatmeal stout in. So they put the oatmeal stout in a barrel, and they barrel-aged it. And then Dark Door took the barrel and put in their Spirit of the Yolk bourbon in that barrel oh, nice. for a year. So, uh, you know, we're getting the normal toffee, vanilla uh, notes out of this stuff. But we're also getting a little bit of cocoa and a little bit of that, that barrel, barrel age from the, uh, the oh. beer. And, and I got I to gotta tell you, man, this is, like, this is like really smooth. I'm really digging it. Um, and that was a gift from my friend, the, the Levies, out at Dark Door. And uh, this is for them here tonight. So, uh, Love uh, it. Cheers, folks. Yeah, I, noticed, I noticed you're drinking, Eddie. See, we might have to – this is two weeks in a row, maybe three weeks in a row. You've had a cocktail. So this might be a normal segment. What are you drinking? This is from Drake Brewing out of San Leandro, California, called Denogonizer. And yeah, it will pretty much take the top of your head off because if you can see that little tiny bit of right and right there, 9.75%. Holy That ain't your daddy's man. course, man. This will knock your pecker in your watch pocket. I love it. Holy moly. That's some strong stuff right there. That's no right. bush light. No. Look at that color, man. A lot of, lot of hops going on, but a lot of malt backbone in that thing. So it's delicious. Man, that look, you make that look good, but we both know I don't think I'd like it. Uh, everybody starts off a little bit apprehensive, but, you know, if you like bitter things like bitter foods, bitter beer ain't far behind. I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. <clears throat> Is, isn't, isn't bitter beer face a thing of the 80s? Oh, yeah, I remember that. It was, who did that commercial? <laughs> uh, wasn't it like, was it MGD? It might have been, yeah. Or, or, oh, man, that's going to kill me now. We'll have to look that up. Yeah, who had the bitter beer face? I know that Jägermeister used to have all those ads where people would make funky faces first time they belted a shot of that. But I'm telling you, the face of Jägermeister is when you're going and throwing up because you did like six shots and nobody told you to fucking stop five ago. Well, dude, Jägermeister is not my thing. I He's think sweet. I did that once. 
Nah, that's a rite of passage. When you stop drinking that shit, that's when you know that you've you become an adult. You've been a real man. <laughs> <laughs> so so bitter beer face was a 1995 commercial oh. from Keystone Light. Keystone. Oh boy. Yeah, that's that's some yummy beer. I don't even think I'd do that one. Yeah, that that's one of those ones that everybody just kind of like you, you tried to avoid unless you were really broke and you you and your buddies were pooling the money to to get it you know that's you know. when you didn't have enough money to buy the bush light right you get the exactly. even more low rent <laughs> hey big eddie c man you missed it once again we got to get these things back in the same room because uh dude we did some two inch thick ribeyes tonight man and they were they were incredible and uh we're gonna let everybody take a look right now check it out guys oh yes what is going on booties we got some fun stuff ready for tonight, but before we start, if you're popping in, I got to let you know, if you're posting up and sharing some love on uh, my personal page that we've been friends on for a long time, I'm not going to see any of your comments because they're all coming over to the new page and I need you to jump over. <clears throat> So everybody checking in right now, I see you popping in on the one page. Do me a favor, switch over to at Eric Young's 13 and uh, switch over to Eric Young's 13 so we can see your comments, see your hearts, see your likes, see your loves. Derek, I think I see you there. Jump over to Eric Young's 13. Just type in the search bar on Facebook, Eric Young's 13, and you'll pop up. Uh, we got people coming in. I wish I could see who it was. Uh, it's not really showing up on my, I got a screen over here, so we're trying to see, throw some hearts, throw some likes, throw some love, who we got in the room here? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Tell me where you're from. Tell me where you're hitting us from. Let us know. Jump over to the other page. I see you guys all popping in on my page. Type in Eric Young 13 and let's see what you got. Let's get it rocking and rolling. We'll answer all your questions, do whatever we can, uh, but we're going to start cooking here right away. And again, all the love. I love that you're checking in, checking us out on the uh, Halfway Hangout, but uh, I can't see your comments unless you're on the Facebook page, Eric Young's 13. So jump over to Eric Young's 13 and uh, let us know where you're checking in from. Let us know what you're writing, what you're saying. We'd love to hear all about it. All right, guys, I'm gonna get started. I got some uh, nice, nice ribeyes here. And when I say ribeyes, I mean, I bought some a prime rib and I cut these bad boys myself and they are huge. Sean Noble, thanks for checking in. Uh, if you're checking in on the Eric Young's 13 page, let us know where you're checking in from. Let us know what cocktail you're drinking during the halfway hangout. But uh, we're going to be doing some, uh, the official technical term for these ribeyes uh, is big ass ribeyes. And uh, we're going to be making some big ass ribeyes tonight. I got a little bit of Voodoo Chef Nola on there. They've been sitting trying to get to room 10. But I got to tell you, I, I'm out here sweating every week. And uh, tonight it's nice and cool. Uh, we're getting a little bit of a uh, break in the weather. We got a front moving in. It's chilling down here. And it's super duper nice. So, we're gonna be getting to those in a minute. Trying to get to room temp, but it's kind of chilly out here today, guys. Again, if you're checking in on the Halfway Hangout and you're on the uh, page that you and I have been friends on for a hot minute, take the time. Go to the search bar, type in E R I K Y O U N G S 13, and switch over to the other page. You gotta make that happen. Got to make that happen. All right, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some buddies of mine. If you follow Voodoo Chef, which I know you all do, you know that a couple weeks ago we did a Voodoo Valentine. Uh, we jumped out to Dark Door Spirits, and we took over the distillery for the night. We had a nice little event out there. And uh, just amazing people. My relationship with Dark Door started like a while ago. 
I'm gonna come around here. I actually started meeting with Dark Door to see if they would help me make a voodoo whiskey. And what I have in my hands is that whiskey that, man, maybe two, three years ago, they uh, made up for me to try. And it says right here, Dark Door Spirits, three year old, three year aged corn whiskey, Voodoo Chef, 80 proof. Um, and look at that. That's super nice, isn't it? This is all I have left. And so I'm holding on to this. Uh, but uh, we're gonna talk about some other Dark Door stuff because our relationship has just grown. All my peeps on this page, Eric Young 13, make it happen. All right. So this guy's is for special occasions. Um, obviously we didn't jump into a bottle with, with bourbon, but uh, we did get a relationship that has lasted quite some time. They make a product called Spirit of the Oak. And this is made right here in Tampa. Obviously, you know, we can't, we're not going to call it, they, they don't call it bourbon, they call it Spirit of the Oak. Uh, but this is a bourbon right here. Uh, when you taste this, you're going to get all the natural tasting profiles that you would out of a bourbon. You're going to get the caramel, the toffee, the vanilla, and all those flavors that that oak barrel imparts into the uh, grain alcohol. And remember, and, and I'm talking like I'm smart, I hate smart, people teach me. Uh, I was talking with my boy down there who's in charge of all this and uh, he's giving me all the lessons. So over 60% of the flavor uh, of the alcohol is going to come from that barrel. So we got a little spirit of the oak. They did something a little special and they took the spirit of the oak and they obtained a barrel from a local brewery. The brewery had a barrel that they did an oatmeal stout in. They took the beer and they made an oatmeal stout and they threw it in the oak barrel and they pulled it out. Dark Door then took the barrel, took the spirit of the oak, dropped it in, and created the, the oatmeal version of spirit of the oak, the oatmeal stout bourbon. And uh, uh, one, of, one of my new buddies that I met down there told me that I had to try this. And uh, you know, I met the, the Levy family down there. Such amazing people. I'm so stoked. I'm so excited that they uh, shared this with me. This is 118.6 proof. And if you want to taste this, just so you know, there are, I think, only eight bottles left. So if you want a bottle of that, you're going to have to call Dark Door right away right away. So uh, let's try this on the side. Oh my. Man, you get all those same notes that we get from the spirit. You know, I was expecting it to be actually a little hotter than the spirit, but it's actually really smooth. And we're getting a little bit of a uh, a little bit of cocoa undertones, and uh, that oatmeal is definitely that, that you know oatmeal stout flavor. Oh, this is going to be my sipping. We're going to keep this over here. Again, hey, hit us up. Let us know where you're checking in from. Let us know where you're watching from. In the meantime, while I'm sipping this, I do want to let you know I've got the green egg, wicked hot, wicked wicked hot. Uh, we've got the bottom vent all the way open. I've got the top vent all the way open. I've got my pogo in there and it is just flaming away. Uh, I'm watching a lot of transition on my page here. Guys, I, I can't see what you're writing. I'd love to be in that conversation with you. Okay, I can see that you just checked in. Uh, do me a favor, go to the search bar on Facebook, type in E-R-I-K-Y-O-U-N-G-S 13, all one word. Switch over to the new page. Make sure you like it. Uh, so make sure you follow us, add us, slash us, whatever you do. But that way I can check out your comments and you'll be right here on the screen where I can see everything you say. Here's to you. Oh, man. All right, so we got this bad boy flaming hot. And before we move any further, you know, I want to... 
we hear a lot about different things going on out there. And, right? You know, we lost somebody this week. We lost a buddy of the family. And uh, he was just a super, super cool cat. And uh, he fought long and hard. And uh, Def, one of the good guys, he uh, wanted to come out to the Voodoo Valentine. Uh, wasn't strong enough to make it. But, uh, you know, he was definitely throwing down some voodoo, voodoo seasonings, doing some dirty chicken out at his house. And, uh, you know, he finally lost his battle after a long fight. This is for you, baby. All right, guys. Time to quit fooling around. Jump pages. Eric Young's 13. Jump over to the other page. It's time to play. I was at Dark Door this weekend. My buddy who made this for me, Brandon Marshall, one of the owners of Dark Door, he, uh, he said, hey, dude, let me make you a cocktail. Let me make you an old-fashioned one. I'm like, okay, dude, whatever. Make me whatever you want to make. That's cool. And so he made uh, a little drink for me, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I wanted to kind of recreate it and do a little voodoo version here for you guys today. Uh, not too much different from him, but we are going to uh, add a few things that he didn't have in his cocktail. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to get a little mason jar here. We've got our, our seal and our lid. Just make sure they're together. And I'd love to tell you that we're going to measure this bad boy. Uh, here we go. We're going to put a little spirit of the oak in here. Here, about three dashes. Now, if you know about old fashions, um, they use a little sugar, a little simple syrup. Watch what we do here. We're just going to hold our cherries here. You know what? We're just going to. We're going to add the cherry juice right to the old fashioned. And I got to tell you, these are part of cherries. No rhyme or reason, guys. I like these Lombardas, not him adding the juice how I please. And you know what? Oh, I like it. One of the five food groups, right? Motivated caffeine, carbs, and carbon. We're going to get this up just a little bit more. All right, so. If you want to add a splash of water and tame this down, that's J-O-K. -okay. Um, if you don't want to use the Lombardo cherries or the cherry juice, by all means, use a little bit of sugar, use a little bit of simple syrup. Um, that's it. But this is it on our product. And you know what that looks? Perfect. I mean, we all know I like my glass built like this. But we're trying to get to this glass here, so I think we're rocking. Old-fashioned. We're going to add our cherry. I'm going to go ahead and put this right on top of my pretentious ice cube. Leave that there. Uh, we're going to get our little piece of orange. So I'm just going to take a nice scrape of this orange. Uh, we're going to take this zest and we're going to go ahead and rim this glass like you see the bartenders do. That way when it comes up to your, your face, your mouth, you get that drink. You're getting that orange flavor, that aroma. Then we're just going to set it right inside. Now here's the cool part. Um, we're going to make a smoky margarita. Uh, margarita. Smoky old fashioned. So I'm going to get my lid ready and I'm going to get my smoking gun on and I've got cherry wood in my smoking gun so I'm just going to light my cherry wood up and you're going to see smoke start to pour out of my gun any minute and you can see the smoke coming right out. All I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my mason jar with that smoke There we go. And I'm going to close that smoke right inside. And we're going to seal it inside. And now I've got, to go with my Lombardo cherries, I've got some cherry smoke inside my mason jar. Now, we can let this set. And you can see the smoke right inside there. We can let this set, and we can... Uh, make 8, 10, 12 of these, whatever we want to do. And then as we get close to service, we just give it a little swirl to get that smoke 
incorporating with our spirit of the oak bourbon. And then, as I come to the table, the guests come up to the bar, when I open this up, that smoke is going to pop out, and the aroma is going to hit them, and then we're going to pour right over our pretentious ice cube with our cherry and our orange, and we've got a nice little smoky old fashioned. I appreciate my buddy Brandon teaching that to me. I appreciate you hooking me up with my uh, whiskey how many years ago that was. And uh, I appreciate the relationship we're forming with Dark Door. Uh, my new friends, the Levy family, who hooked me up. Rockstar status right there. They are amazing people. Alright, I guess we better start talking food, right? Because that's why we're all here. And, uh... I don't know if you notice, I don't know if you can see, we actually have three pieces of meat here today. Normally, I cook two of everything, and the girls get to enjoy. Today, we are going, uh, we're cooking three, and uh, that's because it's steak, and we all know that, uh, you know, I'm going to sit down and enjoy the hell out of that, too. All right, I've got my green egg just fired hot, uh, wide open on top, wide open on bottom. When I lit the charcoal, to get the charcoal stoked quickly and up to temp fast, I used my uh, my flame boss and I hooked it up. I left the lid open. I turned it uh, to 250 degrees. That little trick that we talked a couple weeks ago. Uh, so it started because the lid was open. It didn't think it was 250, so it was blowing air really hard. That fan was on high and it was stoking that charcoal for me. I didn't have to do any work at all. Um, flame boss is definitely the boss so um, again we're probably at 600 degrees here when I open this up oxygen is going to flow in there uh, we don't want it to, to, to burp out at us we uh, the flames to come out you want to burp your grill um, so you just want to lift it open a little bit before you open it all the way we're going to take these bad boys I don't know if you can see this from there but look how big that thing is half my face right and we're just going to lay these on the grill. Booyah. Guess what? We're done. Uh, we're going to take our pans and flip-flop them. Put our dirty pan with raw meat on the bottom, our clean pan on top. Take my tongs. I'm going to leave them over here. We're ready to go. Now, again, I've got Voodoo Nola on the outside of my steak. I know. Voodoo Nola. Isn't that your... Uh, your shrimp oil, let me tell you, it is awesome on beef. When I was coming up with this, uh, we we're talking about it during the week. What are we going to make? What are we going to do? Uh, my buddy, and uh, I'm sure you guys can guess by now, I'm talking about H because uh, he's my PIC. We hang out and talk about everything. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to make with the ribeye. I don't know what I'm going to make. My boy always goes to surf and turf. Always. <clears throat> oh, surfing. Uh, we saw some U10 scallops the other day, some, some Debo U10s, and he's like, oh my God, look at those. We should do those with some steak. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> where are we going to cook them? Uh, halfway Hangout comes up, I'm doing ribeyes, he's like, oh, you should do surfing turf. Okay, we're going to put a little twist on it. We're going to combine my ribeyes, H's desire for surfing turf, and my new, well, my old new pals at uh, Dark Door, and we're gonna make a little bit of bourbon shrimp voodoo style to go on top of these ribeyes. Mm. When you smell this, you can smell the chocolate and toffee notes. I am, whoa, snap, guys, I am in love. Dark Door better save me another bottle of this. Because I don't know that this is going to make it through the recording of the podcast tonight. Alright, so here we go. I got my pan on. Remember, when we're cooking, we always want to condition our pan. We're going to drop some olive oil in here. Uh, that much. That's, a, again, a technical term. If you want the recipes, uh, check out the sites. Check out what's going on. 
Um, you'll find them on there. These steaks are already smelling amazing. Remember, I'm going for about 135. I'm going to do three to five minutes per side, and then I'm just going to shut and damper all of my holes and let them rest. So um, we're going to keep an eye on that because uh, I might forget. All right, so our pan's getting hot. And, uh, you know, we've got a little bit of that, that NOLA on there. NOLA is like kind of like Texas meets New Orleans, kind of Cajun Creole. And so it's going to have a little bit of bite to it. So I wanted the shrimp to be a little bit on the sweeter side when I put them on top. No, we're not doing the scallops. We're going shrimp. I've got my, my olive oil in the pan heat. We're going to start with some shallots and some garlic. And we're just going to let that start cooking. I remember back in the day, which if you didn't know, according to Dane Cook, uh, was a Thursday. Uh, so back in the day, I used to watch my, my buddy Bobby cook. At the time, he wasn't my buddy, he was my boss. And I was so amazed at how well he could control the pan, the flavors that would come out of the pan. Uh, and that's what got me excited to learn how to saute. I'm going to get a little bit of color on my garlic and shallots, and then I'm going to dump in my shrimp. Remember, shrimp are going to put off water. So we want to use a big enough pan where we're not going to have the shrimp steaming, where they're sitting on top of each other and that water's just steaming them. So we want a big enough pan to hold all of our shrimp. The flavors are going to sit there and combine with that uh, garlic and that shallot. All right, guys, I'm already going to move my steak. A little burnt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a turn on them. My first turn. And I'm just doing about a 45-degree turn. Closing it back up. Those steaks are huge. They're probably going to take a little longer than I first anticipated. All right, so I'm going to move my shrimp around. Get some movement on these. Notice I keep switching my tongs. i got my beef tongs over there. I've got my shrimp tongs up here. And we're just trying to keep things... A little segregated here. Even though we're gonna mix them all together at the end, we're all good. All right, so here we go. I don't know if you guys can see the blinds blowing and everything. It's a little windy today, that, that change coming in, but it feels good. Um, again, guys, we still got a lot of people on the, the page, Eric Young's uh, Facebook page. If you jump over to uh, Eric Young's 13, Eric Young's 13, we can talk, we can interact, we can chat, and uh, that would be super cool. Okay, you're high-fiving me and everything on the page. I can barely see it. Switch over. Get, get a new friend. Eric Young's 13, and we can hang out. All right, so guys, here we go. I'm getting a little color on my shrimp. Remember, if we overcook, overcook shrimp, they become rubbery. And we don't want that. We want yummy, yummy goodness. So, I'm going to go ahead and get ready for the next step here. I got my shrimp rock and roll, and I got a little bit of color on them. Uh, searing that outside, and now here is where it gets good. We're going to add a little bit of spirit of the oak. And when I say a little bit, we all know I don't mean a little bit. And uh, I have my lighter out here. I did. I was going to see if we could ignite it, but I don't know where we put it. Right here. There we go. Alright, so now we're just burning off that alcohol, so we're left with just that amazing flavor. We're going to get those caramel toffee, vanilla notes, and uh, you're probably saying, dude, why didn't you use the oatmeal stout? Uh-uh. That's the only... There's only eight bottles of that left. All right, let's Ooh, looky, looky. Take a look at these bad boys. We're flipping the two. Two of them are already getting flipped, guys. Oh, we're gonna flip the big boy too. He'll just be the first. All right, here we go. We're moving fast now. All right, so now we've got our bourbon in there, our garlic, our shallots. We've got our shrimp in there. I got some brown sugar. We're gonna add a little bit of brown sugar. 
Get this a little sweep. That was about a quarter cup. And we're going to add about a quarter cup of soy sauce. And uh, I'm using Pico Men's. Just something about a bottle. It's so easy to use, so user friendly. Just simple. So uh, that's why I'm using Pico Men's. If you may want to use low sodium if you do. Uh, I'm going to tell you, don't waste your money. Just buy the regular bottle. Use half as much and sub in some water, and you'll be good to go. All right, we got a little bit of Voodoo Chef Smokehouse here. All right, we're going to add that in there. And we want to get a little bit of tartness in there. So instead of adding some wine or some vinegar, we're going to add a little bit of Voodoo Chef Fat Boy, about a teaspoon. We're going to add a pinch of red pepper flakes to get that little bit of contrast. Bring a little bit of heat behind that sweet. And we're rocking and rolling. Now, all we need to do is oh, bourbon, the smokehouse, the soy sauce. This is money. This is money. All we got to do is let this reduce. We're going to let this cook down. Now, you could have added a little bit of cornstarch in and mixed it into one of the liquids before you put it in. Put it in, and as it heated up, it would have thickened. I hate to make this reference, but kind of like those taco packets that you use when you uh, make your tacos at home, and you put that powder in with three quarters of a cup of liquid or whatever it is, and as it's cooking, it thickens up because it's got a little cornstarch in there. If you want to get rid of those packets. Heat up, hey Kay, what's going on? You switched over. Um, if you want to get rid of those packets, take two and a half tablespoons of Voodoo Chef Red, one teaspoon of cornstarch, mix that together, brown one pound of meat, add three quarters of a cup of water with that two and a half tablespoons of bread and one teaspoon of uh, cornstarch, you're going to have some amazing tacos. Better than that stuff you buy at the store. No additives, no preservatives, all natural, gluten free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's reducing. we got to check our steaks. Remember, get the burp. All right, we're going another turn. We're going another turn. All right. Hey, okay, now's the point. We shut her down. We shut her down. We close up all our baffles. fire is going to start to go out once we close off the back. Once there's no oxygen, flames start to go out, and we're just going to let that set for a minute. Now, my sauce is reducing, looking super yummy. Uh, I got to tell y'all, while we're waiting on these, uh, make sure you check out the Booty Chef podcast. We have a lot of amazing guests that come in, and uh, this week's no different. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, you can go back and you can do, we know my affinity for bourbon, you can go back we do a Jack Daniels tasting, you can learn about the history of Jack Daniels, uh, we had Dark Door on doing cocktail making, uh, the drummer from Queensryche has been on, go back check out all our podcasts and you can do that on our YouTube channel which is YouTube forward slash Voodoo Chef 13. So Voodoo Chef 13 is our YouTube channel, check out those and uh, we have some of the cool people we have. Tonight we have some really, really cool things. We recorded tonight, it'll drop this weekend. I almost forgot. Last week, we had the U.S. Coast Guard. Amazing. And the U.S. Coast Guard is now an official sponsor of the Voodoo Shack. So make sure you check them out. Throw them some love. Uh, they're helping us support students uh, looking to go to culinary school. We're helping them. Uh, by making opportunities available for some of our kids, and it's just going to be a great partnership. So check out last week's podcast. It's up right now, episode 85. Uh, we're talking with uh, Chief Ruff, just an amazing, amazing, cool cat. This week, uh, we have a... All right, guys, I got to gotta, gotta cook while we cook. All right, so here we go. Our shrimp's going to relax for a minute. Uh, I got my steak relaxing. If you don't know my steak, I love dropping a little bit of butter on top 
as we're getting to that resting state. So we got some booty chef butter we're gonna drop on top of each one. And if you're at home keep it scored. I know I switched songs. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the last of my butter here and just mount it into my sauce. Only because you can, you don't wanna waste it. Voodoo Chef garlic butter is good. Um, make sure we close it up here so that's baffled out. And then inside our shrimp, last thing we're gonna add is our green onions. But we're gonna do that after we get our steaks out. So, Um, this week on the Voodoo Chef Podcast, uh, Jim Eichai, an Iowa farmer, is coming on and we're going to check out what it really is like to be a farmer in the United States. Uh, you know, I sat back thinking about, what do I know about farmers? Well, I know I had that little weeble wobble farm crap. I know I had the other little farm with the little animals. Uh, I know the cow goes moo. I know there's a farmer on the old main card. Um, I know Willie Nelson and John Cougar sing a lot about farmers. But, but when we think about farming, uh, you know, it's not wake up, feed the chickens, and some of this stuff you, you may or may not see on the 90 Day Fiance. Not that I watch that show. Uh, but we're going to talk to Jim and see what it's really like to be a farmer in the United States of America. Uh, he's a corn farmer, he's a hog farmer, I believe they eat beans. Uh, you know, we're going to get down nitty gritty, and I can assure you right now, this is not going to be a one episode podcast. Farmers are, are, are scientists, they're, they're laborers, they're, they're workers, they're, they're amazing, they're horticulturalists, they're, they're culinarians, they're everything. And I can't wait just to uh, sit down and chat and learn more and more and more and more. I mean, I'm, make sure you check out the podcast. It's the Voodoo Chef uh, 13 is our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Check it out. It's going to be a great time. And if it's not, stick around until uh, one of the spot comes to trivia because that's always fun. Uh, that's part of uh, one of the spot comes to trivia. All right, so here we go, guys. We're going to pull these steaks off. We're going to open this up. And look at that coming out. Look at this. I am telling you. If these things aren't perfect mid-rare, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. All right, so we're going to walk these over. Look at this. Look at these steaks. These are fan damn tastic. And it's only going to get better right now. So, normally, we put these on a nice little plate. And, you know, we'll dress them up and body dotty. We like the potty. Uh -uh. We're going to town here. We are dressing these up. We're topping these with our bourbon shrimp. Wow. And our green onions. And guys, this is going to be a piece. This is going to be a piece. We'll bring this over, let you guys get a sneak peek. And then uh, we're going to take a look for you on the halfway hangout. Dave Thomas, how you doing? Dave, this is because you're Dave Thomas. That's why I'm showing you this, buddy. That's like super duper right there. All right, guys. A little bit of Nola ribeye with bourbon blade shrimp. The bourbon we were using, Dark Door Spirits, Spirit of the Oak. Make sure you check them out. Find them on the, on the, the Facebook, the Twitter, the, the Gram, anywhere you use social media. Make sure you throw them some hearts, some likes. Make sure you like the Eric Young's 13 page because that's where all the halfway hangouts are transitioning to. That's where we can read your comments. Check out the YouTube channel, Voodoo Chef 13 on YouTube. 
And uh, Carl, I better see you in trivia tonight. And uh, until then, guys, thanks for hanging out at the Halfway Hangout. Big Eddie C, you're looking at that computer. It was such intent, man. You're still watching that damn video about them ribeyes, man. That, I just, I, I probably, this, you can't tell, but this, this rag is soaked from, <laughs> you know, wiping the slobber and drool out of the corners of my mouth. I'm like you, man. You're drinking that nine point whatever beer that <laughs> I, I forgot to tell everybody this, uh, this, this oatmeal stout bourbon. 118.6. Oh. Yeah, glass glass number three is going down real easy, if you know what I mean. I bet it is. Dessert in a glass. Uh, hey, I was talking, Eddie C. You know, you know, when we talk about farmers, I was mentioning in the halfway hangout, you know, when, when someone says, hey, you know, what do you know about farmers? I said, well, you know, I, I know I used to have that little toy when I was a kid that was a barn and it had all the animals and there was a little farmer dude in there. I know a cow says moo because when you pull the string, that's what it tells us. Uh, I know, I know that there's a farmer Bob card in the old maid deck, and I know that uh, Willie Nelson and John Cougar like to sing about farmers. But you know, other than that, I don't really know what a farmer in America does, and that's sad because uh, you know I'm in this business and I buy all their food, and. Uh, yeah. I'm really stoked that we got a, a real life farmer coming in and I'm being a smart ass, but you know, to, to have a real life United States farmer coming in the building and, and get to talk to him. I'm super stoked. So let's welcome in uh, Tim Eyshide right now to the Voodoo Chef podcast. <laughs> Jim, what's going on, my man? Hey, good, Eric. Good. Uh, how are you? Oh my God. Welcome to the, the Voodoo Chef podcast, brother. Thanks for joining us tonight. You bet. You bet. This is my buddy Big Eddie C. He's gonna he's gonna ask you all the hard questions. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so we already went through the routine. Big Eddie Big Eddie C is drinking some uh some beer from from the the left coast, which doesn't excite me. I've got my 118 proof uh, bourbon, and and you're killing that bush light like it's nothing, man. Yeah, it's just, it's just an after supper drink. Yep. The official beer of Iowa, right? I guess it is. I, I like it. Yep. <laughs> you got one of the best craft beers in a town called Decorah out there. Um, Toppling Goliath. Yep. Yeah. De Decorah's further away, about three hours from me, probably. Jeez. Yeah, we actually sent uh, Scott over to IBA, over to the brewery to see if we could get some of that uh, assass. What was the assassin one I wanted, Ed? double assassin or something assassin and they said we could okay. uh, get it if we paid a hundred dollars and our name was selected out of the raffle and we're like yeah no <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh right. man. jim i don't know where we're gonna start man um you know um, i know you're a farmer i know that yes, uh, i know that you, you 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 raise hogs and you do corn and you do soybean but I don't know what the hell that means, brother. I don't know what that means. I know I like pork. I mean, it's one of the five food groups. Yes, sir. So, so tell <laughs> us, you know, I, I'm take away all the stereotypes and everything. Your house looks exactly like my house. It doesn't look like you're, you're sitting on a farm, man. What's up with that? Yeah, well, we have a, yeah, we just have a ranch home. We live on a, we live on a farm outside about five miles from town and, and so where's town? What's town? If I were flying in a plane over top, are you one of them big hatch marks that I see from, from when I cross the Midwest? No, we're a pretty small county. I live in Carroll County, Iowa, and it's, there's, only, there's only about 23, 4,000 people in the whole county. Oh, my goodness. So I'm five miles roughly from the nearest town, and, and it's, I grew up in a small town with 200 and some people. I lived a mile from another small town and I grew up, so I was born and raised on a farm and I guess we always raised something, cattle, hogs back in the day. And now I just, now I just raise hogs and I farm. You know, I'm super stoked about the raising hog thing because <laughs> again, it is one of the five food groups. Yes, uh, sir. 
you know, the vegetables. I, I really don't eat vegetables, but I'm super, super interested in learning about this. So tell me what a day in the life, what, what are we farming right now? What crops in the ground right now? And what are we looking at? Well, and it's, it's winter time here. So nothing's, nothing's going no. on in the field would tell about April. We, we will usually plant corn in April, about, about middle of April, we start planting. If, if, and then like, so right now I just take care of a few pigs and we usually get pigs in, they weigh about 10 pounds. And then we raise it, we usually have them for about less than, let's see, less than six months and that pig will weigh 300 pounds. Holy, oh. holy moly. So yeah. How many so do you get in at a time? Well, right now we get about 350 is all. We don't. We're we're a small producer. That's really. That's really 350 small. 350 pig. Eric, that's really small. There's guys that have 5,000 head barns. We're oh, we're just. Goodness. We're we're small farmers and or small pig farmers, but we get a we get the, about 350, and then we we raise them till they're fat, and then like I said, pigs grow up fast. Why'd you look ah. at me when you said fat? They, yeah, they, they grow up fast and, they, and they'll be gone in six months. All right, so, so, so the wow. pigs are what really interests me because, dude, there's nothing better than bacon. Um, right. So, so you get 350 head in and they're weighing about 10 pounds. Now, where do they come from? Um, these pigs come from a farrowing barn in Colorado. And so... And they, they truck them in. You get a big old truck and they truck them in and yep. they're yours now. And, and what kind yep. of land is needed to house those pigs? Well, this is just, we call it a, they come in, we put them in and we call it a nursery for like baby pigs. And they stay in that nursery for about six, seven weeks. And then they weigh about 60 pounds when they come out. And then we put them in a finishing barn and then we, we finish them out and raise them to their market weight. And usually that's about 280 pounds to 300 pounds. What color are the walls in the nursery? Do we get a gender reveal when they come in or, or do they just go no. straight into the nursery? Yeah, they, we don't separate them. Obviously there's, yeah, the males, yeah. In the, so, yeah so when you say they're in a nursery, it's just a more of a, a watched area. It's not really, we're not like bottle feeding them or anything. No, no. They get, they get corn and soybeans like mixed together in a feed and they just, uh, they're, we put them in a nursery cause it, they, the, the baby pigs like it a little bit warmer. It needs to be 80, 85 degrees for them for the first few weeks cause they, they got to stay warm. And then as they get older, we actually raise pigs outside and we bed them and stuff and they, then they go through the same weather we do. So they're outside if it's 90 degrees or 20 below. Holy oh, cow. God. So it was recently like like zero or below zero there. The pigs were outside just chilling? Uh, yeah, two weeks ago, we, we got down to 24 below here. without the And then the, with the wind chill, it was 40 below. And the pigs were outside doing just fine. Man. Wow. So yeah, it, it, it was cold. Yeah, I, I saw a, a couple videos and actually, uh, you know, a school teacher up there, it, it got to be zero and she was excited because she could take the kids to the playground because oh, they were allowed to when it hit zero degrees. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, insane. Yeah. yeah, it was, it got to, uh, last week it got to, what, 35 degrees and it felt like a heat wave because it was 60 degrees warmer than a, a week earlier. And it so, was 30 so you know, yep. IFA lives up there, Iowa Farmers Association. They play trivia with us. He says 40 degrees is T-shirt weather. I was wearing T-shirt today, and it was, it, was, um, it was 53. We were working on a – I do some construction, too. We were working outside today, and it was just gorgeous. It was 50-some degrees, and it was just – we're all wearing T-shirts. So, <laughs> so Big Eddie C., anytime – chime in here anytime, but I'm yeah. like – you know, we're talking pigs. I'm like super stoked. So, so the, yeah, that's about the pig. Yeah, the pigs. I mean, there's there's more to it than that. But basically, you just take you just take care of the pigs like you would. Just we take care of them. We don't want them to die. We we bed them. We <laughs> you know was we take, say you take care of the pigs like you would a child. And I was you, he knew the yeah. question. Do you keep your kids outside in negative forty degree weather? <laughs> but they, 
but we I work we they go out when it's cold when it's cold here we, well, last week we got we got 10 inches of snow and we only missed a few hours of school we don't it's Iowa we don't stop because of the weather we, you you if you stop you're going to be inside all winter well <laughs> and as a farmer you don't get to stop either I mean those pigs no. uh nope. they, they 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 need the care 24 7 so they yeah. you, you you keep them in the nursery for a certain period of time, what weight do we move them? Is it a weight or is it a time frame? Uh, we, we go by time more, about six, seven weeks, and then they're usually weigh right around 60 pounds, and then they're ready. You got to get them out of there. They're too big for the nursery, and they need to get in a, a bigger building with more space. And then, then from there, we just keep feeding. We, keep, we change the feed rations every few weeks <clears throat> as they get bigger, and then they... When they get to be a certain weight, we just call the packing plant and then we get a semi and they come and get them. And then they go to the, wherever they go in the whole United States and everywhere. So, so when you say you call a packing plant, I mean, are we calling just like a local packer? Or are we calling like a Smithfield or one of the big houses? Well, there's only two, there's not a lot of, most of our pigs go to Smithfield, and then there's a uh, what's the other one, Tyson, and they're the closest ones. The closest one to me is about 30 miles, and then there's another one about 50 miles away. They're more about the two that are closest to us. And when you're talking about, you know, when we talk about business, and I'm talking about, you know, when I'm talking, uh, I'm buying food and I'm buying that pork and or the belly, you know, I'm factoring in every portion of that belly when it comes in. What did I pay for it? You know, how many times did I handle it? What are we looking at cost-wise? Every ingredient that goes in. Uh, when you're talking about a pig, uh, you know, you buy the pig at a certain price, and then what's the average cost of the feed for one pig to get it ready to go to, to slaughter, if you will? Oh, boy, everything varies by the price of corn and soybean meal and what you pay for the pig. Um, right now, I would say every pig, roughly, it takes about 10 bushels of corn to get a pig to market weight. 10 so bushels. 10 bushels of corn will feed a pig to, from baby to market weight, roughly, I think. So you're looking at, at $5 a bushel, that's, you know, that's 50 bucks. And then you buy the pig. You're probably going to be about knee deep into a pig, about 120 bucks right now. And then I ain't, I'm not sure what the market price is lately, but a lot of times you're breaking even right now, or some guy, you know, we might be making $20 a head. Wow. Sometimes, sometimes 50, depending and, if the market's good. And, and the market's just simply dictated by what people will pay. I mean, yep. It's to, and then what Tyson will pay you for the pig. It's, it's, it's all on the Chicago Board of Trade. It trades. It's one of those things that, you know, they trade. Pigs, pigs and cattle and corn and beans all trade. I don't, I mean, I don't, uh, yeah, it's, the pig market is all over the place. It jumps around every day. It moves. It's, it's a moving target, so. And when you're factoring in your costs, so you factoring in, uh, uh, the transportation, or does the packing plant pick that up? Uh, that's our cost. Everything's there. There's everything's our cost. We got to You got to buy till they get till they get the pig and send you the check. Yeah, and I, yeah, Jim. It sounds like you're paying for the pig, whatever the seller says. You're paying for the corn, whatever it is. You're putting it on a truck and paying the trucking company, whatever it is. And then you're sending it to Tyson, and you have no say in the matter. They're paying you whatever the hell they want to pay you. They pay you what the spot price is that day, or you can contract ahead of time if it's a good price, stuff like that. But it, uh, it sounds, yeah, right now the farmer ha always has been, just like a bushel of corn. They, Chicago Board of Trade, they tell you what, the, what a bushel of corn's worth or beans. You know, we don't, we, we can't just, I can't just say I want $10 a bushel because no one's going to pay that. They're gonna go whatever the trade, what it's trading. <laughs> so there, there's like algorithms that go into factor because I'm sure it's got to do with the weather, demand in certain places. Like if they got some disease that's affecting the pigs in Denmark, they're gonna need more here. So that's the difference between me paying eight ninety nine for a 
pack of shitty Jimmy Dean at Winn Dixie or two ninety nine at Sprouts when it goes on sale. I guess that's all got something to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever they want to showcase and whatever they want to. Yeah. So the market, like I said, it's a moving target. But over the years, you, you know, generally we make enough money, obviously, to, you know, to buy things like a normal, like a, like if I had a normal job in town, you know, some days, some days I work, you know, ten hours or fourteen hours, and some days I work two hours if I want to. I, you know, I in the spring I'll work, you know, we work. 15 16 hour days when we're in the field and Oof. trying to get do our chores but then I, in the winter time i i might only work three four hours a day depending on just take care of the livestock and maybe move some corn i got a truck i truck my own corn and uh, stuff like that and then i just push snow when it snows and <laughs> push snow you gotta love it right yeah, yeah. A lot of snow. <laughs> I saw we IFA sent us a picture last week. Four foot snow banks on his driveway. I'm like, yeah, no, no. Yeah, we. It's it's not as bad as it sounds. It's nice once in a while to have the seasons here, it, except we, for the we dead have seasons here. They just happen all in one day. Yeah, it's nice. It's cool in the morning. It gets hot as hell. Then it fucking it. rains. And then you it gets nice again. <laughs> yeah, you you guys don't know what a, you don't know what a season is. We got we truly have four seasons here. <laughs> we're, in se we're in a season as of a couple of days ago. It's called pollen season. Oh god! And my dogs drag that shit in, and I got to vacuum two times a day. I got to run that Dyson because I'm getting stuffy and sneezy, and our our they drag it into bed, and the whole damn thing looks like a breaded chicken breast. It's disgusting. <laughs> You know, cars are yellow. That's our season right now. There's not spring, summer, fall, or winter. It's pollen. That's Wait, the other season. Two Zerdex a day, unsponsored. <laughs> you, would love, you would love Iowa. There's no pollen in the wintertime here. There, oh. there, it, it's so cold here, nothing. That you just, it's such fresh air. You would, wow. Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. Go Jim, ahead, Eric. Tell us about the, the corn and the soybean, because... You know, I'm excited about the hogs. I want, I, I want you to send me a hog. I want, I want uh, you to get some <laughs> belly, uh, send me some belly from your farm that I can cook on the halfway hangout. That would be super cool. That, I don't know. I guess it could be done. But okay, so yeah, I farm with my, I farm with my two brothers, and we farm, a, we farm, we we either farm or custom farm about two thousand acres, and. Wow. And know, you're gonna I, tell me again that's small, right? That's that's not very much. <laughs> we we can we can we can do that. I can plant. I usually plant my corn in about five days, six days, a thousand acres of corn, and we got about a thousand acres of beans. We have big equipment, and we have auto steer, and we have we do no till. We don't do any tillage, so we just go out and plant right in the, last year's old like residue, um, if you ever seen, just Google a cornfield. And yeah, we just, so like I said, April, coming up here in about five weeks, I'll be planting corn. And, and, and two, you're gonna do a thousand acres of corn, and you said you're gonna go directly into the soil. You're not gonna do any turn into the nope. soil, you're not gonna put any nutrients in, you're just boom, drop it in. Uh, I already got the fertilizer on and I got the nitrogen on already. So yes, I, the nutrients are there already. And I bought, I got the seed, I got the seed bought and yeah, we just uh, put the planter on and we have a big planter and a tractor obviously. And then we plant corn and then we plant, we usually plant corn. Like I said, we start about the 10th of April. If it's nice out 15th, depending on weather, if it rains, we got to sit in the shed, but, and then we plant beans then we take care of them crops all usually so what's it May mean to take care of the crop it, what's it mean well, to take got, care of the corn and the bean we got to make sure that we got to spray the corn a couple times to for weeds and the grass you don't want a bunch of weeds and grass in your corn and beans and then you and then we sp we might spray like for bugs if we get some bugs coming in like june or uh, july uh july is a big yeah when you say when you say spray um, I mean, you know, I go out in my front yard and I'm, sh 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 you're using big time machinery and yeah, we have a thousand gallon sprayer 
with an 80 foot boom. Oof. So I can, we can spray about 300 acres a day. Wow. <laughs> and one acre, one acre is about the size of a football field. That's how, Oof. if people, don't, if you don't know how big an acre is, just look at a football field, that's an acre. Oh, and you have, two, you have 2,000 of those. We have 2,000 that we care for between, we do, p other people hire us to do some farming from them because they don't have machinery. So we, we do our own, which we have about 1,000 acres, and then we do about 1,000 for other people. Wow. And then we take care of, we just, as the season goes on, so we plant in April, and then we usually start harvesting in September. And so what's that, what, I mean, planting, I think we've all had a little backyard garden and we dug our finger in and did that. Um, you have machinery that's doing that to cover the acreage. But what's it like, uh, you know, getting the corn, getting the, picking the corn and getting it ready when you harvest it? What, how does that process look on 2,000 acres? I mean, we're not walking out and I want this one. Well, no, I, uh, oh my gosh. Okay, so... It's like for corn, for example, everybody knows what an ear of corn is. Uh, <clears throat> I got a combine that, <clears throat> that can take eight rows at a time. It's a so 20 a combine is like a big ass tractor? It's a big machine. Yeah. That's an official it's, culinary term, by the way. Big ass. So it's, it's a big a, ass tractor and attachments. We have a we have a big ass combine and we have and, a we So have what's a big, that do? What's a combine do? It takes the ear in and then it separates the ear from the cob. So just imagine a ear like a sweet corn, even though sweet corn is, that's you eat. This corn I harvest is not for eating. It's for ethanol and like animal feed, chickens, cattle, hogs, turkeys, whatever eats corn. And then we run it through this machine and you get just the kernel. Take This combine takes the kernel off the cob. We put it in a, we put it on a semi. We have our own semi and we have a big old, like a grain cart thing. And it, then we just haul it to our bins or we haul it to town and sell it or we put it in grain bins for the winter. And then we haul it when we have time in the winter. And well, we'll see, get. That, that yeah. was going to be my question. Why are you buying corn if you're growing corn? If you're growing We're not corn, growing. Can't you I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not buying corn. I use my own corn, but it's worth $5 a bushel. Got it. So, so you still calculate the costs. Yeah, if pigs weren't eating it, we we could, you know. So anyway, yeah. So we raise we raise all of our own stuff. Um, yeah, and so yeah, it's a it, it takes us uh, it takes us about twenty twenty five days to harvest the corn because we can do about fifty to seventy five acres a day, and then soybeans I can do I can do about one hundred and twenty acres a day in soybeans because it it just goes faster with beans we have a bigger it's a different process so i can it takes us about 35 days to harvest depending on weather we usually get done in november man and i want to come play yeah, oh yeah you gotta you gotta come for the hunt sometime buddy just for a couple hours just for a couple hours I, I'm, I'm broken come <laughs> yeah i'll come for the hunt sometime when, when in november you'll see it all you'd get you'd be amazed you guys used to have the hunt in October during my daughter's birthday weekend, so I could never come. And I, you, just, you just moved it to November not too long ago. Uh, we've, been, we've been the first Saturday in November for a few years now, mm -hmm. for about five years. So first Saturday in November, the hunt is this year, and you're welcome. So, so what do you say, Eddie C? We got pig jig, and then we got the golf tournament, and then we go to the hunt. And I'm I don't know what the hunt is. I don't think they shoot a damn thing. I think they sit around and drink <laughs> bush light and eat. I yeah, can we do, do that. that. We, and we eat pork. We eat pork for every meal except for chicken for one meal. <laughs> oh, I can live with that. That's, those are a couple food groups right there. Come on up, Big Eddie. Yeah. So I got a question. As far as growing the corn and the so soybeans, what's the temperature range on those things? Like start here and go there and like – you know, I only have to compare it like they trip out here with the strawberries because it's okay if it's close to freezing for maybe a night, but beyond that, then they're dusted. They're in trouble. One night will sweeten them up, but beyond that, it'll, it'll just kill them dead. Yeah. Um, okay. So we start, we'll plant if the ground condition, we want the ground to be about 50 degrees at a four inch depth. So, okay. if, so basically, if it's too cold in April, I won't plant. I'll wait till. 
end of April to plant if it's so if it's cold. Some because we still get snow in April here. What? Oh yeah, we get snow in May. Some about I don't know five six years ago we got what ten inches of snow on May first. So it was to 80 weekend. degrees today, Jim. Just wanted to let you know that. Yeah, it was 60 here today, too. We had a nice day today. Um, so, yeah, you just wait for the ground to warm up. When the ground's about 50 degrees and the forecast looks pretty good, we'll start planting. But, and the corn, if the corn is still growing, if it, we can get cold. It can get in the upper 20s a few nights, and it won't kill the corn. It'll just, it'll stunt it a little bit, but it can handle a little bit of cold. But once the corn's out of the ground, you don't want it to freeze. Otherwise you got to replant, which we've never really replanted. So we've been pretty, we just watched the forecast. When you're, and, when you're measuring that four inches deep and you want it 50 degrees, how do you measure that? Do you just go out and rando? I mean, you got 2000 fucking acres. I mean, well, are you measuring different but, spots, or are you just, of, I'm that of, good, our, I know. Yeah. All of our acres are pretty close, so, and the radio has the four-inch soil temperature every morning. They just, I don't have a thermometer, but they tell you, like, oh, the four-inch <laughs> soil temperature. The radio has the soil deep. temperature. Oh, sure, it's farm country. Dude, I turn on the radio, and they're like, hey, this bubble love sponge, what's going on? <laughs> No, they'll tell you that every morning they'll be up. They'll, they, in, in the, and now they don't say it like this time of year because nobody cares this time of year. We know the soil is cold now. <laughs> so, about, uh, in about four weeks, it, we'll start watching the soil temps. So when April 1st hits, everybody's like, oh, how, you know, the soil temps like 40 degrees. Oh, it's, and the frost is out of the ground now, getting close because, you know, we get, we get three, four foot of frost because of the cold winter. And, so the ground is just froze solid, but now it's like concrete in the winter here. The ground is just froze solid. The frozen um, tundra. Yeah, we get AC. I know. I just yeah. hear Berman's voice right now talking about it. It's yeah. a different world, so, man. Where, where the hell? Where the hell is this place, Iowa? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's freaking. It's it's heaven. Don't don't tell everybody. Y'all all, all want to come out here. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be close to water, man. I don't know if you how much. More water you got there other than a handful of lakes it, it's got all a, frozen we got a, in the ground yeah the lakes are all frozen we got a 10 acre lake about six miles from us so that's the closest water we got ah. <laughs> wow. so so yeah we just watch the soil temps and when it's and then it, well you you know when it's time to plant you've done it long enough you just you know everybody all, everybody, all my neighbors everybody's kind of about the same we all start planting about the same time and then we just we work yeah it sounds it sounds hard but it's we just make it you know you just do it it's so fine. you know i gotta ask where you're at and what you're doing has anything changed because of covid i mean you just still get up grow the crops and feed not, and do yeah, that not, nothing's changed Every, nothing not one thing has changed i still got to plant and take care of animals the only thing different is I wear a mask when we get groceries and go to convenience store and when we go to church and stuff like that. But I don't wear a mask because I'm I'm a I, I'm a social distance anyway. I don't I can be alone all day. I'm in a tractor all day by myself. Oh, are, are, are the pigs wearing masks? I I gotta I gotta say no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they don't seem to care that we have COVID. Yeah. But, hey, um, I wanted, are your soybeans just for animal feed too? Uh, there's also, uh, oh my God, soybean oil. I mean, you, some people cook with vegetable oil, soybean oil. I mean, there's, they put it in diesel fuel now. Biodiesel is soybean. What? Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, bio, if you ever heard of biodiesel. Yeah. That's soybeans. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yep. Wow. And so, yeah, the beans, and then a lot of our beans get shipped overseas. You know, they use it for soybean meal for the pigs. Pigs love soybeans. Ah. They grind it into a meal, and then you mix it with corn and then other ingredients, and that's what the pigs and chickens love too. Yeah. You must be doing fine on that because it seems like every fifth person I meet anymore is either a vegan or a vegetarian, and so the staple of their life is tofu. And I just hang my head in shame, but I think, well, okay, maybe if it's good for a guy like you, then fine. It's more staple. Eddie C, we all know yeah, right. on the bright side of life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I locked in. We all know oh, there. Back. We all know there is nothing wrong with eating tofu. Tofu is simply amazing. It is, it is just so great. It tastes so fucking awesome. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's <laughs> that. Oh. Yeah. I think that thing in the little tongue looks big in the back of my throat when it, you know. Yeah, right. Mine too. Yeah. Yeah. So no, we just so that yeah, that's I don't know a typical day. There's no typical day for me because some days I don't know. What, I mean, springtime is different, summer's different, and then fall is different and winter it's i don't have any typical days i'll have the same stuff but it's always i'm always doing something different i'm planting i'm spraying i'm this that so yeah and are you may do you maintain all your own equipment like right now in the winter are you like getting ready and checking your machinery and managing that yourself and well my my brother my brother ken does a lot of that obviously he's he's a he's a john deere tech so ah. so he farms with us and then he's he's the maintenance guy we do i do we'll get planters ready here pretty soon we're going to get them hooked up and but yeah we do most of our own maintenance we have a we have a heated building that we can work in in the winter time here so we do we do most of our own maintenance and then we do all of our own yeah repairs stuff like that yep Dude, this is this is absolutely insane. The craziness that that is your life, and you're just sitting there like it's just <laughs> chill and relax. If I had to worry about corn, and that was my livelihood, and I had, I mean, and I had to worry about if this is gonna freeze or die or the ground's right, I'd be stressing out pretty bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there there ain't nothing you can do about it. So I just no, it's just I grew up with it. We have we do have crop insurance, so if if it's a total crop failure, I'll get I'll get some money back and then I can farm again next year. But it's been a good life so far. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not starving. <laughs> That's I hope not. You're a farmer. You're growing your own shit, pal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. How I just, many of the pigs go to the slaughterhouse and they get backdoored right back to you? Uh, none. Wow. You mean like we get the meat from them? Right. I mean, you're a hog farmer. Are you going down to, to, to whatever the name of the store is in town and buying pig, or are you like? Um, I just I don't butcher anymore, and my butcher shop closed. So we just and there's just two of us. Our kids are all gone now. So we just we just buy our meat from a grocery store, just like you would. That's that's too funny, man. Well, yeah, that's I, like me. I mean, yeah. I cook for everybody else, but I like to go out to eat. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, we buy our meat just like everybody else. Really, we used to butcher. I used to help my dad butcher years ago a couple of times. We'd butcher right on the farm. They always butchered right on the farm. We, wow. The meat, the hog never left the farm. We did that everything. Is, right. That's yeah. fucking crazy, and I yeah. bet that's some of the best eating too. Oh yeah. Like you said, you come to the hunt and you get fresh pork. You, you well, that, I was, was going to ask a question: true or false? The pork at the hunt is taken out of brown butcher wrap paper because you guys really don't hunt. All you do is hang out and drink. <laughs> well, uh, technically, we do hunt yet. <laughs> I thought the word was you know all the guys go out to the barn because that's where the cooler with all the meat that we we brought we killed is so the women don't know about it so we can hang out there and drink <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's probably mostly drinking and hanging out and playing cards but yeah that doesn't suck man there's oh, nothing God. wrong with that at all no, no there's nothing wrong with that so no that's that's it i know you i guess and other than just you coming here and seeing the whole operation it's hard to explain everything but I, I so want to come hang out for a day, a couple hours, um, because I'm old and broken. Um, but I would love to walk walk the corn uh, as long as you promise that Malachi is not going to get me. Um, I would love to check out the soybean fields, and 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 I really, really, really want to come check out the hog farms because, uh, yep. you know, I am just enamored by what you do, and I think it's super cool, and 
I don't think farmers get enough credit for the things they do on the daily and what goes into creating the, the, the groceries that we take, take for granted so much by walking into a Publix. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, when I asked you to come on, you were like, I, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I just do what I do. And I'm like, <laughs> I want to keep talking because I've got thousands more questions I could ask you. But it's, it's you know, we, we got other things we got to do. But I want to definitely thank you for coming in and yeah. and for doing what you do along with all the other farmers out there. And uh, we yeah. definitely are going to have to do a part two to start <laughs> digging into more of the science that goes behind some of this stuff. Because oh boy, I don't know. You're about, you're at the end of my, I don't know much more. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you know a lot more because it's time for a little <laughs> pointless pop culture trivia. Hey, Eddie, Big Eddie, it was nice talking to you too. Oh, you don't get to go away, my friend. I'll stop here yet. I, I just, I got another one. Here they all come. Welcome oh. in, everybody, for Pointless Pop Culture Trivia. We've got IFA checking in. You're in trouble now, Jim. Iowa Farmers Association is checking in to there make sure is. that all the facts you said were true. We huh. got Chef Carl Miller from Silver and Smoke. Check him out on all social media platforms at Silver and Smoke 11. And then we've got the educational guru, Miss Liz Ann Ippolito checking in. What's going on, guys? Hey. I, I hope it. everybody's ready for a little pointless pop culture trivia tonight. Tonight we're playing with Farmer Jim, and not from your old maid deck as a kid, but from Iowa. He is a Iowa hog farmer and corn and soybean farmer. And... Uh -huh. uh, and just doing some amazing things out there to make sure we got a lot of good shit to eat. Uh, he raises one of the five food groups, um, butter, bacon, caffeine, and carbs. He is a producer of bacon. And for that, he deserves all the credit in the world. Uh, that, 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 that's two. He raises corn. Corn kind of counts as carbs, even if we don't eat it. Still wait, wait, wait. Corn makes whiskey. Oh, that's right. <laughs> He's got one in your glass. <laughs> I drink my corn. Corn and Bush Light. Corn makes Bush Light. Bush Light, the official beer of Iowa. I tried, <laughs> to stop, I tried to stop and buy some today, and I got laughed at. <laughs> I walked in, and I'm like, hey, do you guys have any Bush Light? And, like, three people behind the counter laughed at me. As they should. <laughs> I don't, I didn't want to say anything. I, I, drink, I drink Coors Light, and I'm even laughing at the Bush Light. Um, all right, guys, if you're ready for a pointless, little bit of pointless pop culture trivia, don't forget we only have two rules. Number one, no cheating. And number two, you must have a drink. Uh, Carl, we know you're drinking water. You're drinking the water of the gods because you got to get up at 4.30 to get to the gym for that 5 o'clock start time because you're a beast. <laughs> Did we see Nana's water? Did we get to see some Nana's water? Oh, no. not yet. Oh, I'm just – waiting for the, the, the bottle to come with the little <laughs> baby thing on the end and just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as always, we're playing for the right to have your name entered into a drawing where you may be selected the winner of a prize that may or may not be named at a later date. So if you are ready, we will get right to it. Question, and <laughs> we're going to be struggling tonight because I don't have the <laughs> because. I'm supposed to wear glasses, but I don't wear glasses. But you don't. <laughs> Question number one, the weather or asteroids? What does a meteorolo meteorologist predict? Carl. Carl. Uh, the weather. The weather is correct. And as always, Big Eddie C is the keeper of the score, and his ruling is final. If you know the answer, shout out your name. Well, I got a bunch of sensible people here tonight. I don't have uh, Sam barking and whining and harassing me like, you know, <laughs> one of my dogs when it wants a damn bean out of the, you know, green beans or hard-boiled egg out of the fridge. And thank God IBA is not here, too, because if IBA was here, IFA and IBA might start talking about dirty and dusty fucking hog nuts again. And God forbid that. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Question number two. On the TV show The Office, Steve Carell's character Michael Scott said, 
I'm not superstitious. I am what? Never watched the show. Really? It's about a farmer in Iowa. I've never watched not, the show. Not really. Not really. <laughs> the office? Uh, um, Michael Scott said, I am not superstitious. I am a little stitious. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Sam just texted me and said he knew that one. Oh. <laughs> God help us. <laughs> That's us. funny. Getting close to the cross. I questions. need farmer questions. Farmer questions. Here's a farmer question. <laughs> According to the co uh, manual. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Not really. Yeah. I just. Liz ain't got excited for a moment. It was an education <laughs> question. That's fine. Question number three. What B word is a man tending to if he's trimming his Van Dyke? Beard. Lizian. Oh, Farmer Jim does not know the rules. Big Eddie C, make a ruling. It's his first time. I'll give it to him. I don't know. What's Jim, the rule? you are correct. It is a beard. You have to yell your name when you know You have to shout answer. your name out to be called upon. Oh, I'm sorry. You're working with educators here, my friend. We right. to... I'm sorry, Big Eddie. I'll yell out my name next time. He's got I'm gonna give you a mulligan. I'm a fair oh, go your name's not your name's not Sam Creighton, so I'm gonna accept the picture. <laughs> huh. All I right. Mean, so huh. so Big Eddie C after three questions, you better give me a score because I'm drinking 118.6 proof. Oh dear. Uh, Jim and Carl each have one. Actually, my, and, and for the record, let's just add to that, just for grins and giggles. Every time we call out the score, how many does Sam have? Uh, minus four. Okay, good. <laughs> Every time he answers, I'm, I'm docking him the point. <laughs> <laughs> Question number four. Which of the eight planets in our solar system comes first alphabetically? Jim. Jim. Uh, Earth. You are yeah. correct, sir. It, isn't it your anus? <laughs> it's not. It's not your anus. <laughs> Those aren't two words. It's how, you, it's how you pronounce it, right? Yeah, I think you're wrong, <laughs> Mr. Farmer Associated. <laughs> <laughs> you better watch out. He might find you. He might find you. <laughs> and his buddy <laughs> gets involved. They might take the deed to the farm. I mean, it's going to be like. We're going to double your dues. It's going to be like a Hallmark. We're going to double your dues. <laughs> I'm kicking your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just for the record, IFA is not the one that told me about the, the hunting weekend where we don't really hunt, we just drink. Was not IFA. Question number okay. five. When your mechanic pulls out a dipstick, it's usually covered in what substance? Carl. Iowa. Sam. Carl. Oil. I'm so glad uh, you got that one and not IFA. I was scared after the fucking. I tried. Well, after I you tried. and IBA's little uh, public service announcements, I was a little scared. <laughs> oh, you know it's going to get really bad. When the Connecticut Sandwich Association joins in in a couple of weeks, it's going to get oh, really no. crazy at that point. Oh, no. He's coming in now? Uh, he's supposed to. Oh, dear. Watch out for CSA. Uh, wow. Question number six. What greeting card company uses the slogan, when you care enough to send the very best? Lazan. Ooh. Lazan. Hallmark. Hallmark is correct. Is there any other, anybody else? Don't they have like a monopoly on it? They should have an antitrust suit against Hallmark. Shoebox. <laughs> That's the other company. Shoebox. Shoebox. Who does who? Shoebox. 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 Shoebox? Shoe. Why yeah. did the name it that? That's where all the cards end up in some fucking shoebox under a bed? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I, is Hoops and Yo-Yo a thing? Who, who does Hoops and Yo-Yo? What the hell is that? All right, go, go to the Duncan. card store and look Duncan. up a hoop, and look up, look up a hoops and yo-yo greeting card. They're the best. 
You're oh, just making okay. shit up now. No, no, <laughs> no. Yes. Jim's gonna be. Jim's gonna drive. Fuck! I gotta drive another goddamn hour to the next town to see if they got it. Uh, <laughs> I gotta get some movie. Fuck that. <laughs> the the farmer's greeting card. I love you. <laughs> Here, I made this for you. <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna dumb, it, dumb it down for me. Dude, that was with love. That was with love. <laughs> okay, Eddie, see, I think we're on question number seven. Yeah. We are, yes. Question number seven. On John Deere Combine number 37D, the part that is used to connect the corn peel, I don't know, I was making shit up, trying to get you an answer, man. Question number seven. <laughs> what part of the bride's ensemble does the groom Traditionally tossed to the crowd. Jim, the Iowa. Oh, Jim. Garter. Jim is uh, in <laughs> with the garter. Yeah. Got it. All right, Big Eddie Bruce C, we need a score. Everybody else. Big Eddie C, we need a score. Jim has three. Carl has two. Lizanne has one. I I have a strange feeling IFA is going to be raising your monthly dues there, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> IBA is getting a call after this. <laughs> <laughs> IBA, we need to take the deed to the farm. <laughs> <laughs> take them out. Question we're going to turn, it, we're gonna turn <laughs> it into a Sam's and a, and a shopping center with Moe's and Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> that sells, that sells Harmont cards. Question number eight. <laughs> According to the Outback Training Manual, how many inches above the steak should you be when seasoning the steak? Carl. I knew you'd know that. I just made that shit up. What's Dang the it. answer? What's the answer? Six. six. It's six? six. Damn. <laughs> Twelve. Carl, oh. No, it's six. Carl worked at Outback for years. I was fucking with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> question number eight. <laughs> question number eight. Carl was like, Carl, I know you're fucking with me. Uh, question number eight. What New York Yankees legend famously said, 90% of the game is half mental? Jim. Jim. Oh. Yogi. Yogi Berra is correct, my friend. Wow. Farmer That's Jim awesome. is is killing it here, and uh, <laughs> I think he's trying to prove a point to IFA by making them the old mate tonight. <laughs> Come on, IFA, you got to get in. It's a food I question. Need... Okay. It's a food question. True or false? When making the pizza sauce at CDBs, you stir it with your arm. <laughs> Damn, <man>. Iowa. <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> True. <laughs> it is true, but again, made up a question. Number nine. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 was, that was for real, but not really. That didn't really happen. Question no. number nine. Dress your sandwich or dress your wounds? What will they more likely do at the Mayo Clinic? Lizanne. Yeah, Paul. Lizanne. The nurse is Wound. in. Wounds. Dress yes. your wounds. Dress your wounds. Lizanne, how long were you a nurse? Uh, 13 years. How long did you teach nursing? Well, uh, I taught respiratory, but it was... Same thing. Yeah, Super. it was uh, six years. You taught, you taught respiratory? What is the correct term for this device? An inhaler, meter dose inhaler. <laughs> I call it security blanket. Yes, for you it is. It looked like a PVC thing that linked up the stump. <laughs> all I saw was some L-shaped PVC thing. Well, you know, it's really all it is, except the insurance company charges you an ass ton for it. Yeah. Question number 10. If you order a Hawaiian pizza, you're typically asking to ruin it by adding what fruit? Lizanne. Oh. Yeah. Lizanne. <laughs> uh, ham and pineapple. Pineapple. Eddie C., we taking that? Ham's not a fruit, but pineapple is. We'll take it. All right, we need a score because that was 10 questions down. Jim has four. Lizanne has three. Carl has Ooh. two. Ooh, Carl, Lizanne. I'm beating you. 
I still have a chance. <laughs> I have zero. I was I was sporting the bagel, and Carl, you are correct. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> Question number eleven. Education guru, I'm going to be embarrassed. Uh -oh. Which word is the adjective in the following sentence? Voodoo Chef products are amazingly yummy. Iowa. Iowa. Amazingly. Amazingly, that's not correct. No, no that's an adverb. That's an adverb. All the educational people chiming in. That's an adverb. They don't care if they got it right. They just want to correct you. That's education. I, I have to say the whole sentence in my head again. <laughs> Voodoo Chef products are amazingly yummy. Oh, oh you uh, got snaked! <laughs> Big Eddie C. I heard Carl. R. <laughs> That's, that's uh, the form of the word B. Uh, M is our word was. Uh, no, that is incorrect. Lizanne. Lizanne. You need to say it again, Lizanne? Yummy? <laughs> Yummy? <laughs> Yummy is correct. Yummy it was great, though, it. Lizanne. It was like this, this was like a master class in mask slipping. This is where it wasn't a professional educator. This was where like, the mom came out so she could scold him. It was awesome. <laughs> Just think, just, think it, if, just think if Sam were here. Oh, oh that would be great to watch her like tisk tisk him. <laughs> oh, I would have needed a diaper. I, I would have been dying. I'm 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 just excited that she did not scaffold or or ask anybody the reason to to give their reason why they thought that that was the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you wish you had that 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 Nana's water, right? Yes. <laughs> Oh. All right, Big Eddie C. That's question number 11. Two questions left. What's the score? Jim and Lizanne have four, and Carl has two. Oh, Carl could tie. IFA could be the spoiler. <laughs> what O word is a sea creature that has up to nine brains? Iowa. Iowa. Octopus. Octopus. The spoiler the is on. And just so you know, Jim, Lizanne has no shot in the world right now. What kind of question is it, Lizanne? Uh. It's a math question. Oh. oh. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I was going to say a question about a band. <laughs> no, I wrote them today, not Ed. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is two plus two? No, I'm kidding. Jello. <laughs> All right, question number 13. Uh, Carl, you could tie it up and force us into a, a new question that we don't have. <laughs> question number 13. If you started with a dollar and you double your money three times, how many dollars do you have? Jim. Jim. Uh, 12. You are incorrect, my friend. Well, <laughs> I'm going to have to take IFA because he's communicating with sign language, and I don't want to be insensitive to people communicating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> IFA, what's the answer? It's eight. It's eight. That's correct. So the correct answer is eight, but that means we have a tie with no tiebreaker question. Big Eddie C. Oh, no. Oh, Eddie's only got three. Big Eddie, see, what's the official score right now? Jim and Lizanne have four, and IFA and Carl have two. All right, here we go. Tiebreaker question for Jim and Lizanne. For all the money. For all <laughs> the money. Millions. I do. That are empowerable. The, the, the prizes, are, oh wait, Lizanne was in this episode. I can't ask a question from that one. And the only reason I know because it's got a cooking question that she oh. was so excited that she got right over all the chefs. <laughs> all right, let's find a, a question here. This is what happens with live video.
I don't remember if Lizanne was in this podcast or not. Well, probably not. <laughs> but I know I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lizanne, you're going to be honest if you were if you were in this podcast. Well, I know you will be. For a New York musical to be considered to be on Broadway, the theater must have how many? You were here. Look at her; she's being honest. That's. That's the educational guru right there. Honest woman in America. Sam would have gone for the win and just taken it. Oh yeah, he just snarked it. <laughs> no remorse. Like a serial killer. No attendant spike in blood pressure whatsoever. Oh my God. <laughs> it's poor children. <laughs> Only Big Eddie C. Only Big Eddie C. That's my friend right there. Yeah, uh, in the kids book series, fourth graders George and Harold Turn Principal Crumb into Captain Whom? No clue. As our friend Bill Workman would say, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> um, that would be again. Captain Underpants. Oh, <gasps> Lizanne, you have children. I know, I should have known that. No clue. Bad I have underpants. I should have known that. <laughs> Notice Carl has not piped up at all. <laughs> all right, here we go. Another tiebreaker question. Pour yourself some proper 12 and get ready for this outspoken UFC fighter's amazing bourbon. No clue. Really? Oh. Lizanne? It's okay, because the question was bullshit. It's not good bourbon at all. And it's uh, it's uh, Conor McGregor. Who just got bought <laughs> out from that company. What happened? I think he got bought out by the company. Did he really? Yeah. Really? Well, it's probably his end game anyway. Exactly. Yes. That, should, that should be it. <laughs> Uh, speaking of the end game, did you see him lose the other night in UFC fights? Just saying. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. We'll, we'll give it another shot. <sighs> a chipotle pepper is a dried and smoked version of what variety of hot chili pepper? Jim, you're a farmer. I don't like peppers. No clue. Um, the answer is not soybean. On <laughs> Easter. <laughs> Oh, Carl, I, I know this one. What is it, Carl? Help me. I'm on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Let Carl yeah. answer. I'll take, I'll take the credit. <laughs> All right, Carl, share the answer, but no one will get the credit. We'll go to the next tiebreaker question. Jalapeno. The correct answer is jalapeno, or as you Americans say it, jalapeno. <laughs> on a stick. <laughs> on a steep. <laughs> In terms of land area, which is bigger, the state of Georgia or the country of Georgia? Jim. Jim. Georgia state. <laughs> the answer is Georgia. You are correct. I'm glad you <laughs> I'm glad you quantified that and said the state, because if not, I was gonna have a lot of fun. And <laughs> You are correct, <laughs> sir. The state of Georgia is bigger than the country of Georgia. And as the winner of tonight's Pointless Pop Culture Trivia, as always, you will have your name entered into a drawing where you may or may not be selected the winner of a prize that may or may not be named at a later date. Hey, man, I appreciate everybody for coming in tonight. As always, Take thanks care. for playing Pointless Pop Culture Trivia. Take care. See you on the next podcast. Ah. Take care. There you have it, booties. Another episode of the Voodoo Chef podcast. Let's give a big shout out to everyone involved with Voodoo Chef and all things voodoo, starting with Wustoff Knives, the official knife of the Voodoo Chef. 
and jamming up and down the streets of all Ybor City and Tampa Bay, Ragged Old Souls. Thanks for letting me jam with you guys. And when those amps are cranking, the turntables are definitely spinning thanks to the official DJ of the Voodoo Chef, DJ Don Pablo. Check him out spinning all across town, most importantly, at all Voodoo Chef events. Speaking of events, getting ready for yours? Check out Voodoo Chef Catering. Custom created events for every shape and size. Log on to VoodooChefCatering.com to get your information today. A great big shout out to all my booties that are in the Voodoo crew. Thank you for your support. And of course, we could not do what we do in the crew without all of our crew sponsors. First Watch, Chef Shane Shibley, thank you for believing in our mission. And of course, we can't forget Voodoo Mortgage. For all your mortgage needs, check them out at VoodooMortgage.com. Alessi Bakery, a Tampa staple. Drop in and check them out today. And our newest sponsor, Twisted South Food Truck. Chef Adam Jessup, thank you for what you do. And of course, all things voodoo are in support of the Voodoo Chef Foundation, providing culinary scholarship and feeding those in need. To find out more information or make a donation yourself, log on to VoodooChefFoundation.com today. <laughs> 